Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on a hump day Wednesday. Uh, the, the summer is, is here in full effect. It's been, I'll tell you what, it has been a great weather year here in Arizona. Probably not anywhere else. You go, go ask people in Texas and Mississippi right now. Uh, they're probably hating life. Uh, the power is going out uh, in certain parts uh, because of excessive heat in Texas. They're asking people, hey, can you guys turn up the thermostat? Make it a little warmer in here. Uh, there's not enough power to go around. It's amazing that uh, in this day and age, a, a, a country as prosperous as this, and we can't figure out the power situation. Uh, but, hey, don't worry. Wind and solar will fix it all. But this is why everyone tunes in. This is why, you know what, it's funny. I say something like that, and I say, this is why you got to own gold and silver. Because it's that idiotic. 800 Nine five one zero five nine two. AllAmericanGold.com is the website. Jay Powell is talking in front of Congress uh, today and tomorrow. And Jason, he started out with a bang this morning. Inflation is going higher. We need more rate cuts and, uh, you know, the higher for longer thing. But Jay Powell started out the morning talking tough. Rate cuts or rake heights, Joe? Rate, rake heights, I take it, right? Rate hikes. Did I say cuts? It's been a bad I just want to make sure. I, I, blew, you never... I blew the special <laughs> twice yesterday. Uh, I don't even know. I'm, I'm lucky I, I said it was Wednesday. So, yes, rate hikes. Well, you never know when Jay Powell's going to come out and demand rate cuts. So I, I wanted to make sure that might have been what, what was really happening. But, no, I, I didn't see that, uh, what, what you're talking about. But uh, I, I think we're uh, – we're, we're, we're going to have a timeline here pretty soon as to when things will change in the future, Joe. So I think, um, like yeah, I've said many times, I'm watching the repo, the reverse repo market, and there's finally movement there. And uh, so there's, I think the uh, the rate pause uh, and the the future rate hike have a lot to do with watching that account. Yeah, well, and again, we're going to see some movement in that account with all the treasury issuances. Uh, these banks got to pick up the slack, so they're going to have to have less money uh, sitting at the Federal Reserve. Of course, this is what got them in the in in trouble in the first place. Uh, but but it goes on here as we we look at what is going to happen in the future. He made a few other things that are worth noting. Uh, he's still talking, so I'll probably all throughout the show be giving you liners uh, that come out of this. Housing. Now, here's some good news for housing. Ready? I expect housing inflation to come down significantly over the next 18 months. Then I was just like, Wow. What a piece of crap this guy really is. So let me tell you what that means. Hey, I can't do anything about how come, you know, rents and housing prices went skyrocketing high. But in 18 months, it'll have stopped going up. And that way, the year-over-year number won't look so bad, Jason. So, you know, there there you go. There's hope. There's hope that starting in about a year or so, Hey, the housing inflation numbers won't look so bad because they'll just be, they'll have peaked and stayed at these high levels. Uh, and then once you get to that year over year, the number can start falling. So there you go. Hey, way to go, Jay. Great job. Great job. Well, and you know, talk about stable that they, prices. That, that's one of the Fed's plays, I think, uh, to, to, yeah. to, to save face is that if they can inflate the, the, uh, inflate america out of its debt problem a little bit you can you in theory you can inflate your way out of your debt problem and uh yeah you're right you get a couple of years of year over year higher inflation then it just comes to an end will that be enough joe will that will that satisfy the situation i, I mean trying to keep the rates higher because obviously zero percent interest rates no matter what game they're playing is not sustainable so we've got the higher rates now and, and it seems like everything you're telling me uh about what jay powell is saying is they, they want to keep these rates at, at you know around a five percent level, maybe higher, maybe a little lower, and uh, that's that's what we're looking at in the future. And and right now the uh, the the spoiled uh, markets that have been on zero percent for so long, they're, they're going to go through a lot of pain, Joe. It's uh, you know 
if, if this is where we're headed, is permanent higher interest rates. Well, you know, we had Joey on Monday, and what did he say? He says, let me tell you where Northwestern Mutual stands. We think rates are going to go higher in t- today. Jay Powell all but confirmed, I expect a rate hike at the next meeting. The way he talked, you know, and it's funny because he doesn't talk this way at the press conference when they decide whether to take a pause or not. But at least in front of Congress, Jason, he, he's talking about rates much closer to 6% than 5%. I mean, so, it, it, and again, it's just talk for now, but that, that's what we have to go on. And, and, and again, if you look at the housing starts data from yesterday, I mean, I don't think it's mathematically possible. Uh, and, and one of the big things, and we didn't get into it enough yesterday, apartments. They are building them like hotcakes. You are not going to be able to afford to own anything in the future. And Jay Powell just confirmed it. Here's how we're going to get to 2% inflation. We're just going to wait. <laughs> right? We're going to wait and hope that the year-over-year numbers don't go any higher. Yep, I think that's that's you know for the most part the Fed since 2020 have been, I mean even since 2019 they've kind of been saying what they're going to do and then they do it. They, it's not like they're lying. Right. It's just that nope, the reasons right. they're doing it are kind of it's hard hard to understand the reasons exactly why, right, Joe? Not the, I agree. They're telling us what they're doing and what Jay Powell told us today. Higher rates are coming. Patriot Radio News Hour will be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour. Quick look here at the markets. Uh, the Dow is down again today. Uh, you know, Jay Powell higher rates, uh, but off the lows right now. Down fifty. The S and P's down twenty five. The Nasdaq's down two hundred. Uh, gold's down three at nineteen thirty two. Silver's down forty cents. By the way, a great silver item coming up below cost today uh but silver is down this morning the 10 year note uh 378 so uh wall street doesn't want to buy it too much uh but the realities are it looks like rates are heading higher but again if you're tired of this if you're tired of listening to uh, J. Powell, the bankers, telling you how much they care about you, but not doing anything to help you. Uh, if you're tired of of watching, you know, listen, what, what are we? Three straight years now, and we've had some ups and downs, but three straight years where Wall Street's done nothing. And really, for most people's 401ks, according to Vanguard, you're down to over 20 percent while still contributing. Mind you, so you really right, factor that, and you're probably down closer to thirty percent. Check out a different way: investyrefi.com, uh, up to ten point two five percent returns. This is all in the private student debt default market. So this is not the government debt forgiveness debt stuff. So pe- a lot of people don't know. Uh, and I didn't know, uh, you know. I, I, you know, I have two boys in college. They, we, we were, we are fortunate enough that they don't have loans. But there's two types of loans. You get the government loans. The government will only give you five thousand dollars. And I say only. That's a lot of money, but that's all you get. Well, you can't go to ASU. You can't go to CU, right? You you can't go to U of A or anywhere else. Uh, I don't even know if you can go to community college anymore for $5,000. So then the private loans, these are the banks, J.P. Morgan, B of A. Hey, no worry. Oh, you're 18? You don't have a job? Sure. Can you get mom and dad or grandma and grandpa to sign on the dotted line here? Tell you what, we'll loan you money. We won't even charge you. We'll wait for you to graduate. But we'll loan you money every year so let's just say somebody hey oh i need that's 15 grand i need 10 more grand a year okay well 
After four years, you owe us forty grand. And of course, the second you graduate, thirty days later, we want our first payment. And of course, here comes the interest, right? Here comes the interest. We want our first payment. But I haven't gotten a job yet. We don't care. Or I got a job, but I got nowhere to live, right? I got to pay the rent. I got to do this and that. And, oh, well, you're in default. And, and, of course, you can't get rid of it, right? You can never get rid of this stuff. Uh, the interest and, and all the late payments and fees, that 40000 a 100 grand two years later. And essentially, you're a non-productive member of society forever. Well, why refi goes in? So listen, not all these people deserve an opportunity. But a lot of these people, hey, I got that job finally. I finally I'm at that point. I can make a reasonable payment. Banks are like, oh, no, sorry, your credit score is for something. Nope. No, no, you can't do nothing. Why refi comes in, they buy the debt out from the debt collectors. They buy it, obviously, for less than what it's worth. That's why they can give you such a great return uh, in their vetting process. That's where it all, it's just fantastic. Up to 10.25% returns, and it's really the greater good. You don't need, we don't need government bailouts or this or that. Private industry, good private industry finds a way. That's what Y Refi does. Call them up, 888 Y Refi 24, or, or uh, go out to investyrefi.com. And remember, here's the, the one thing you got to have 50,000, that's the minimum. But Jason, it's something worth checking out because. It's fixed. It doesn't matter. The Dow could go down 5,000 points. And your statements don't change. Your income doesn't change. Uh, and it's something that I think a lot of people, especially over the next 10 years, you know, listening to Joey. Joey's like, hey, listen, this next 10 years is going to be tough. You're not getting these Wall Street returns that a lot of people have been so used to because the solution for 40 years, Jason, was what? Print more money. And now all of a sudden, all that money printing is starting to come home and cause problems. That's right. You know, college loans is one of the most (laughs) blood-sucking socialist programs out there in a lot of ways. So evil. Yeah, well, because I I remember when I was a process server and I served these these, uh, courts, you know, there's a count... You know, I knock on the door, and, and I don't know, was the guy's name is Jeff. And, hey, Jeff, uh, I got a county court summons a complaint, and they're looking at it. He's like, what is this? Like, yeah, well, he's telling you, I guess you're being sued. And uh, they ask me a question. I'm not supposed, you're not supposed to give advice, but sometimes, you know, when I'm serving a 100-year-old grandfather who co-signed on the loan, uh, his county court summons a complaint. They, they don't know what's going on. And, and uh, Joe, I, I really believe these school loans, uh, you, know, you can't bankrupt your way out of it. Such a, a, a really effective way of sucking the retirement out of parents and grandparents. You know, think about it. Right. They've worked their whole life for retirement. They've got their financial life uh, mapped out for their retirement. And then suddenly, you know, here comes, you know, the heartstrings being tugged on because, hey, a grandson or son wants to go to college and they need help. And all you have to do is just, just co sign. When he gets out of college, he'll be able to handle it, right? And then so many co-signers have just been just hurt mightily by this. So you're not even just helping the student get out of uh, the, the student loan. You're probably helping the parents and grandparents who signed for the oh, co-signer. You know, when, I, when, I, when I met with Lane and, and they were first talking to me and, and all the stories about, you know, family, this, this breaks up families. It does. Yeah. And, and brings families back together. Takes the, all of a sudden, hey, you know what? We can go to the family functions, and everybody's, you know, in a much better spot mentally because of this. I mean, here's the great part. This is how good they are. The average person that they help has the entire debt paid off in eight and a half years. Eight and a half years. And I think about all my friends who've been paying for decades because they can't pay enough. They don't oh, times up, I can only make the interest payment, or I can't even make that, or I gotta I need forbearance, blah blah blah, right? And and all of a sudden you they're fifty, sixty years old and they're still paying. So check it out. It's a great way of looking at things, especially yeah. especially because we know we are in a boom and bust economy. That's the economy that that our central bank has given us. Boom or bust. Well, guess what? It's bus time, isn't it? I mean, that's just how it works, right? 1987, bust, right? Y2K, bust. 
right? Uh, the financial crisis, bust, right? Now we're getting ready, right? We, we know what's coming, right? The next crisis, and of course it's always different, right? Every, every crisis is a little different, but it's all rooted in the same problem, which is way, way too much debt out there, uh, debt that's created out of thin air. And Jason, now Jay Powell's like, oh, yeah, we got to go even higher. And we got an economy, let's say, mm-hmm. GDP was 1.2%. And you got to go higher, right? Look, listen yeah, to the headline on C, C, CNBC today. This is, this is the headline. Starter homes have become a fairy tale. Starter homes have become a fairy tale. And that's the truth. This is the reality. There is no way. I mean, really, when you take, I shouldn't say no, 90% of the 20-somethings, early 30-somethings, there's no way they can buy a home without mom and dad helping them. It's, It's not possible. Now, if you guys, hey, I struck a rich. I make hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, I, 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 I did it right, and maybe they can. But ninety percent of them, they're like, no, I make, I make seventy five grand. Which, hey, you're twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. Back in the day, that used to be good money, right? I mean, yesterday we did the article. Yesterday, sixty grand. Guess what? Sixty grand. You're poor. You're poor. Sixty grand. You're poor. Right? That's why they're building all these apartment complexes. That's why they're all coming. Uh, mortgages. Yeah, and Joe, right? maybe now sixty grand isn't percent. poor. Maybe sixty grand isn't poor, but it's barely making it. How's that? It's it's just it's just holding on. Well, and if you got two people poor, earning isn't that, it? Then... What, what's poor? Isn't that poor? I don't know. I mean, that's uh, my know, definition of you know, poor. Everybody has a different uh, definition of poor. I know that uh, when I had less means years ago, that uh, the money I'm making now is was considered a whole lot. You know, but now the money I'm making now is not, it's not so much a whole lot. It's, it's not but so it's, much, it's, right? It's not. Yeah, it's not so much. So it, it's all it's all perspective. But, you know, but I'll say this, Joe. I find it interesting. In, in April, the reverse repo market was at 2.3 trillion. That's the holdings, and and the interest rate is uh, 5.05. It's kind of an interest rate floor to keep the interest rates up, because obviously, if you can borrow money for less, you'll or uh, for, you can get a higher interest rate somewhere else, which is what the, you know. Companies are trying to do, you know, why refi, for example, why would you put your money in the reverse repo and you get 10%? So when that money starts bleeding off that sheet, that's a very clear indication. If they want to keep keep lower interest rates from popping back into the market, they can use the reverse repo as, as an uh, indication that they need to uh, raise the interest rate. So now down $300 billion, Joe, I, I really feel as long as they want to keep interest rates uh, uh, at a certain level, They'll, you know, the reverse repo goes up every time they put the rate hikes higher. So I, I think that's really the fuse. I, if you want to see the rate hikes stop and you want to see them come down, that, that account has to be empty. They'll essentially be emptying or emptying very quickly before they'll go below where they're at. So here they are. They paused, right? Some money's coming out of there pretty quickly. Oh, raise the interest rates, and that will stop the bleeding from that account because that's, you know, that's what's going to fund the government, right, Joe? This is how the government's going to get their monies out of this account because the Fed's not giving it to them directly right now. Yeah, and it, it, it just goes to show you that pause was a bunch of nonsense. Right? It's a good barometer, it, it, though. It's a good way to look at what, what happens right? to that reverse repo. It's yep, going down. Yep, J- just a bunch of nonsense. And, and again, uh, this is everybody saw this coming. There's no good answer here, right? There's no good answer. Raising rates again uh, and get ready. More banks are going to go under. Just look at what we talked about yesterday. It's so simple. 40% of all the commercial real estate loans that are coming due between now and the end of the year okay, are ineligible for a refinance, even if they wanted to refinance, which most of them don't. They're not even eligible. And what does that mean? That means you don't collect enough rent now. When we loaned you the money back five years ago, you did. right? The building was 70% full, and you were collecting well above what you needed to make a payment. Well, now most of the buildings are less than half full. 
Well, if you don't have 25% above what the mortgage payment is in collected rents, you're not eligible to get a refi. You can't refi. So what are the what and again you gotta remember the banks don't own it, right? Some property management company does. Yep. The banks just carry the are, loans. Eighty eight percent of them are interest only loans that are, are, are that are in right. trouble. Right. Right. So think about it. first of all, hey, guess what? Up oh, whoops. I got two problems. One, this building's in California. Two, nobody's in it. Three uh, it's not even worth what you loaned it to me five years ago. And four, I can't meet the, the requirement to get a refi. Th- those, those just get handed right back. And Jason, there's a tidal wave of that coming. And with higher interest rates, all of a sudden now these banks are going to need more capital. Whether you pull your deposits or not, they need more capital. Oh, I got losses. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. When we get back, as promised yesterday, a silver item supply. I'll just say this is going to be limited, so be ready.